Could Arsenal make a shock move for Barcelona defender Jules Koundé? Yes, people, wife boy, welcome back to another Arsenal Trans News video. As always, if you want to be kept up to date with daily Arsenal Trans News vids, this is the place to be. Make sure you subscribe down below on my 5,000 subscribers and hit the bell notification button so you never miss a future video on this channel. And please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section regarding Jules Koundé's potential move to Arsenal. Let's get straight into the tweet brought today by Arsenal News Channel, and it states this. Arsenal are considering making an offer for French defender Jules Koundé, according to various reports today. And it's an interesting one, right? Because ever since Timber's unfortunate ACL injury, it's been clear that Arsenal have delved a little bit into the market. We're not sure if Arsenal are going to make a concrete bid for anyone, but they're definitely tipping their toe in to see, ooh, do we get someone? Do we not get someone? And they're going from there. There's been interest in a few players. I mentioned already Cancelo, potentially, who looks like he's on his way to Barcelona. We looked at potentially someone like Carl Walker-Peters. Ivan Fresnel is another option. So there are players available that Arsenal can go for. Now, it seems as though, as I said, Barcelona are interested in signing João Cancelo. And if that's, if that's the case, it leads to a logical conclusion that one of, the City, one of the Barcelona defenders are out the door. And Jules Koundé could be someone like that. Now, Jules Koundé does fit the profile that Arsenal want. He's a tall centre-back slash right-back. I remember him in the World Cup playing at right-back for France. And we don't have to like those type of players, those... Right backs that can play centre back. You're looking at Julian Timber, you're looking at Ben White. Both those two are centre backs, or at least can play the centre back role by trade, but have been shifted out to full back. And Jules Kunde definitely fits that approach that we like. Now, whether Arsenal do make a full move for the man, that's yet to be seen. We know he will cost quite a bit of money, and in my opinion, I don't think it's the type of money that Arsenal should be spending on a defender. That's an absolute fact, especially given that he's meant to be just a season replacement until Jurian Timber comes back from his ACL injury. So for me, I'd rather bring in someone on loan, potentially, like a Carl Walker-Peters, or at least someone on a cut deal, and then we can progress from there to, I don't know, either keep them or send them back to their parent club. That's what I would rather do if I'm Arsenal. But the good news is that the Tim injury, although as unfortunate as it is, it's happened during, of course, the transfer window, meaning Arsenal can, can obviously resurrect this and make some changes. Last season, Partey got injured during the transfer window and Arsenal chose not to do anything. We, of course, tried to sign Douglas Luiz. We sent three bids to Aston Villa. They rejected it. And at the end of the day, we just kind of rode it out. It didn't really cost us at that point, but obviously going forward in the season, we ended up losing the title because of William Saliba's injury. Just going to show we did not have the adequate squad depth. Now, Jurian Timber came, coming in was the squad depth. He was, whether he was going to be the backup to Zinchenko or the starter. Either way, he was competition to Zinchenko. With, of course, Timber now being injured, the competition's gone. It's now Zinchenko or it's Tomiyasu or, or Kirantini. And I think it's clear to see from Arteta's behalf anyway that he doesn't really rate Tomiyasu or Tini to start consistently at fullback for Arsenal. He'd rather see either Timber or Zinchenko there. So it's interesting to see whether Arsenal do potentially try to bring someone in. Now, both Pavard, you're looking at Kunde. Those players by trade are naturally right backs in my opinion. So whether he wants to shift them to left back or do a complete change around the team, I'm not too sure. But it's interesting to see what Arsenal do go forward and do. Obviously, Ivan Fresnel is another option that Arsenal could go for. Estupinian was talked about in my comment section. Why not go for someone like him? But he would cost an awful lot of money from Brighton Hove Albion as well. And him by trade, he's definitely not a great one-on-one -on -one defender. He's great going forward, make no mistake about it. But we're now talking about a player that's really good going forward but not really good by trade defensively. And I think what Pe Pep Guardiola has especially done at Man City has changed the model for fullbacks, making it so that they're no longer the flamboyant, boisterous fullbacks flying down the wings, flying down the flanks, and rather more defensively assured. And if anything, have more midfield qualities rather than more winger qualities. I think that's what Pep Guardiola has brought to this Man City team. And I think Ar Artists have tried to adapt the same thing at Arsenal. He wants his defenders and his fullbacks in particular have the ability to not just bomb down the wing and become second wingers, but actually slot into midfield and become secondary midfielders. And having someone like Julian Timber that can go into there, Zinchenko obviously by trade has been doing that his whole career basically. That's what I think Artists would want. And... Bringing in Kunde obviously isn't someone that can slot into midfield, I don't believe, really. But at least it's someone that can defend really well. So I think I can see Arsenal making a move for a defender in this transfer window, especially with what there is two weeks left or so. But I think it will take some outgoings. Speaking of outgoings, there's talk of Nuno Tavares' potential exit from Arsenal. Nottingham Forest were interested, but a deal is starting to store as it's becoming very complicated. There are offers elsewhere, though, for Nuno Tavares, and Arsenal are hoping to offload the player for a fee in the region of 15 to 20 million pounds, which would be double what we paid for him, which was around 8 million from Benfica in 2021, I believe. Elsewhere, following Balogun is attracting interest from not only Tottenham Hotspur, but Chelsea as well reunited their interest in the man. 
Arsenal still looking to sell for around 45 to 50 million pounds, with Monaco being especially interested. But if Chelsea and Tottenham are lurking about, Arsenal, I'm sure, will add a premium tax to Balogun's price tag, taking it up to maybe 70, 80 million, because they have no intention of selling this striker elsewhere to another Premier League club. They'd rather ship him out abroad to a Monaco, for example. So look, if Balogun is to go, of course, if um, uh, Nuno Suarez is to go as well, I'm hearing reports also that Arsenal have not made any changes on Kieran Tierney's stance. They are still willing to listen to offers for Kieran Tierney, but will only let him go if a suitable offer comes through. I think that's the right play. Look, Kieran Tierney, whether you love him or hate him, Arteta does not fancy the man. It's just how it is. Arteta does not like Kieran Tierney. He'd rather play Tommy Asu at left back, clearly. He'd even make the squad for the game against Forest. So, in my opinion, I'd just, I'd, I don't mind letting Tierney go. I know many fans say, no, keep Tierney. We have to keep him around. He's a left back. We're running thin after Julian Timber's injury. Look, Arteta does not rate Tierney. He's not going to play him. So, we might as well sell him and spend it on another position. That's what I would rather do. So look, if Tier needs to go, if Balogun is to go, if Torres is to go, if we can raise 80 million with those type of players, then you're looking at 80 million to spend on a defender and a versatile attacking forward, as Arsenal mentioned. I mean, there's still been talks of Arsenal trying to sign an attacking forward. Ansu Fati was mentioned. Obviously, Kudus is mentioned as well, but we know that West Ham are all over Mohamed Kudus right now. Let's see how a deal progresses there. They got their first bid rejected by Ajax. So there are options out there, but for every single day you go deeper into the transfer window, the less likely it is to pull off a deal because... Clubs don't like selling late in the window. And if they do sell, they sell for much higher than they would have done earlier because they don't have time to replace the players. There's finite time left. If you sell your star player now, you don't have time to replace them. And if you and if you want to replace them, it becomes very much a panic buy and those clubs put their prices up. So it's, for every day that progresses in the transfer window, it becomes harder and harder to pull off a deal. Especially also because the season started now. It's well, it's well easy to, to bring in players before the season starts because you've got time to adapt. You've got time to change your system. When you're trying to bring in a top quality player during the season, it becomes much harder because clubs already integrate them into the squad. They're planning the season with them. They're, always, they're built team sheets around the players sometimes. They're, they're a big part of the system. So then say, nope, they're, up, they're out the door now and they're going elsewhere. It can be a real kick in the teeth. So... I think it's been really hard to pull off some deals now. Arsenal obviously have taken some time over it. But I understand the situation we're in. We need to sell players first. Arsenal not being quick enough to sell players. That's been our problem. Buying players hasn't been a problem. Arsenal bought in an absolute bucket loads. We've signed four players and four quality players as well. But selling has been a problem. We haven't managed to sell quick enough in my opinion. And look, there's still, weeks, there's still a couple of weeks I mentioned to go in the transfer window. Anything can happen. But as of now, Arsenal do need to sell to them buy. But the talk of the town today is that Arsenal are interested in Jules Kunte potentially to bring in as obviously a replacement to Jurian Timber. I do think Arsenal should bring in a fullback this season, and I think a loan would be loan move would be absolutely fantastic. A loan with an option to buy, because it means that we can of course replace it for this season with Timber. And if they do a great job, great, we can sign them permanently, maybe as another backup, or we can let them go at the end of the season with no strings attached. That's what I'd like to see Arsenal do. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'd absolutely love to hear it. What are your thoughts on Jules Kunde links? What are your thoughts on any other players Arsenal should go for? Who have you got your eye on that Arsenal should sign? I'm hearing a lot of fans still wanting Mohamed Kudus. That is going to be a tough deal, but I'll keep you guys up to date as soon as I hear more news regarding Kudus to Arsenal. Make no mistake about that whatsoever. And as always, if you love keeping up to date with Arsenal trans news, which I'm guessing you do since you made it this far in the video, you have to subscribe down below on my road to 5,000 subscribers. I appreciate you guys all for tuning into this one, and I hope to catch you all in my next video. Take care.